Dhamma can be understood understand by the wise. So if we have the ability of thinking, we are able to gain that wisdom which helps us to understand what we are talking about. There is one very you know very important um, factor in our life in Pali we call it manasikara in English we translate it as we we call it attention so it was the one of factor it is the one of factor of Nama Rupa too attention you know our uh, our actions, our feelings, our perceptions are also depend on this, you know, the, the way our attention processes, functions. You know, if our attention is caught by something, then we only think of that one. We only think of it. We keep thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. And just in case, when, if another thing catch our attention and then we begin to think of that and we begin to feel, uh, have, we begin to have feelings, experiences and perceptions and intentions regarding that matter. So attention. When our attention flows to, you know, if, if our, when our attention goes towards something, then we feel it, we experience it. So when our attention is there, there is a process of consciousness. So there is a contact. It can be an eye contact, it can be an ear contact, it can be nose contact, so if our attention is caught by a, a smell, then our consciousness processes there and we always feel it and we experience it and we perceive it and we have thoughts regarding what we are smelling or what we are experiencing now. So in our meditation also, what we do is we are training, we are strengthening our, the process of that attention to be focused on wholesome objects without letting it get gets disturbed by other by hindrances but unfortunately our mind you know is disturbed by hindrances so when our mind is disturbed by hindrances, when our attention is caught by hindrances, we can't shoot at our target because we are lost on the way. We can't go, we can't aim. So our, even our understanding also depends on 
the way we can attain to things. If we do not know how to attain to things, we can't pay the attention, you know, wise attention towards that and then we are not going to experience the reality of it. So, if I take this little dictionary, this is, a, this is an electronic dictionary. So, if we pay attention to this one, if you just pay attention to the, you know, the appearance of this, you see something here, you see a dictionary here. Right? So then, you, you know, you have heard that this is a dictionary and you can see and you have, you know, you have seen it and you have heard about this and then inside of your mind there is a perception regarding this material thing as a dictionary. So, that is what we just see right now, a dictionary. So, but there is another way to attend to this. What is the nature of this? Right? Am I being clear? Now if I think, if, if I take this book. So this is a book, right? Now you see this as a book. So there is another way to pay attention to it. What is the nature of the book? Conditions. What is the reality of the book? Most of us do not pay attention to things that way, right? We only see something there that we have been taught, that we have been conditioned and learned. So even mindfulness, you know, we are aware of a book over here, but we are not aware of the reality of this. And we are mindful of what we are doing right now, but we are not mindful of what is the nature of of action that we do right now, right? So when we are running, you know, we know that we are running or we are talking, but we don't know what is the nature, what's the reality, what causes that intention. We don't see it. We just know that I am doing something. I know that I am doing something. But what is the nature of that action and what causes that action, how that action came to be and what is the reality of that action and what are the consequences of those actions. There are so many things to understand in things. That's why the Buddha said in one of the great sutta, he advised a you know, little monk, Rahula, Rahul, before you do something, you want to think of that action. Before you think about something, you should think about it. <laughs> before you're going to talk something about something, you know, you should think about it before you talk about it. Even, you know, while you're talking or while you're thinking or while you're doing something, you should think of what you are doing, what you are thinking, what you are talking about. Even after you are done it, you should think wisely what you have done. It is, we, you know, it is we call wise attention, or wise consideration. We only consider things just, uh, you know, appearance, but we don't go inside of it. There is not only one side is present of things. There are so many sides of things. So we want to look at all the sides of things and get the real meaning, re real perception of things, then we are able to make the right decision, right? Then we gain right intention because there wisdom is present. So as an example, you know, for an, for, for an instance, for an instance, right? For instance. For instance, yeah. So this dictionary, if I show you this side, you know, without, without describing this, uh, this thing, you know, you just see something, right? Mm -hmm. But you 
don't know you can't get a real picture of this without having uh, all the without looking at this in detail and without seeing it and without heard without hearing about this you can't have a real picture of this right so more you pay attention to this you can see it is okay this has 12 languages so then you can see what kind of languages are you know available in this dictionary so you can see you know more you pay attention to this you come to see so many things in this little thing little gadget but if you don't pay attention to it, you don't you don't see them right it is just an example it's, it's a just a instant no not instant <laughs> it's just an example so it's same with our life more we pay attention to our actions, our life wisely. And when we think about it, the reality of this life will be present right before you. You will see it within you because you pay attention to it. But if you just go through it, if you only pay attention to the one side and if you make decision based on that experience, it is not the right decision, it is not the right intention, it is not a wise intention. Then you get trouble because you can't get the real picture of it because you only experience one side of it. Likewise, when we live in this world, we only experience one side of things and we are so attached to that side which is the pleasure but Buddha said monks everything has five sides five factors that you need to analyze the one is how it comes to be the second one is how it disappears or so how it vanishes third way is what is the gratification of it what is the pleasure of it fourth one is what is the danger of it fifth one is what is the freedom what is the way to get rid of it freedom how to be free from it so there is the arising phenomena of things vanishing phenomenon of things and there is pleasure over things and there is there is a danger of things and there is a way to free from things so but we only see pleasure right we are so attached to that pleasure we are looking for that pleasure we don't see how it comes to be and we don't see how it vanishes we don't want to think about it because I don't want to lose it. I only need that pleasure. I need it. I need it. I need it. Then our mind makes so many excuses to use it, to get attached to it, because I like that pleasure. I want it at any cost. That's how our mind reacts to things. Because we only see one side. But when we pay attention to things in detail, we come to understand that there is not only just pleasure, there are other stuff over things that we need to really understand. So when we see the real nature of things that way, then we are not going to get attached to it. We come to make, we come to a decision which is letting go. You can't let go of things just having a just having it as a word let go of it don't worry let go of it you only let go of what you what makes you feel bad why don't you let go of what you what makes you feel good you're not talking about letting go of what makes you feel good it's, if something bothering you you're thinking of how you know letting go 
But if something makes you really good, you don't want to let go of it. But you don't know that the things bother and keep bothering you because you have, we have attachment to that pleasure that I don't want to let go of. But the, suf the suffering comes from that attachment, but we don't know that. So even though we try to let go of things, we can't because we are attached to things. Why? Because we don't understand the way things come to be. Even in this eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind, and visual objects, sounds, aromas, you know, the flavor, touching and thoughts, all of them have that five factors, five sides, five nature that we need to understand. So that's why we want to understand this dependent origination in order to get this problem solved. And then we let go of everything. Then we know we are free from attachment. Then only we can f experience true freedom and true liberation. Otherwise, we only try to let go of what bothers us. So we are not going to be free from stress. It, it, it comes back. So in Buddhist teaching, we, are, we have so many techniques, meditation techniques, to solve problems, not to have temporal peace, not to have just momentary peace. We have so many techniques, so many ways of thinking, wise way of thinking to solve our problems. Then once we solve them, they will never come back because there are no roots of those problems. Because when you think that way, you are able to uproot the main root of it and then no more branches of it. But we something like, you know, you are trying to cut, you know, just you are trimming, you know what you call trimming, right? <laughs> but trimming it around, then it grows back. <laughs> so what I want to do it, but we want to do it, we should uproot it, not trimming around it. <laughs> because it grows, if you completely uproot that, then there's nothing to trim, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> in order to uproot it, we need to find the root. That's why we want to learn about dependent origination. What is the root of it? So, we were talking about the Nama Rupa, the cause of six senses, the Nama call, Nama, Nama are um, feeling, you know, experiences, or perception, Intention, contact and attention. Rupa means form. Four elements, things, four elements and things made of four elements are called form, material stuff. So both of, both of them are connected, you can't separate them. And both of them together uh, we call six senses. The eye faculty, ear faculty, nose, tongue, body and mind. So the Nama Rupa, we, in Nama Rupa uh, is the condition of six senses, six sense bases. Nama Rupa is the condition of the eye, Nama Rupa is the condition of the ear, nose, tongue, body and mind. Now we want to understand what is the cause of Nama Rupa. The Buddha thought that the condition of Nama Rupa is the consciousness. The consciousness is the condition of Nama Rupa. As long as Nama consciousness is present, form, feeling, perception, intention, con contact and attention, this Nama Rupa is present. Consciousness. Now, what is the consciousness? What does it mean? In Pali we call Vijnana, the consciousness which is the magician, or other way we could say awareness. In, pa, in the one of Sutta, the Buddha explained that the consciousness means the ability to be aware of something which, you, which is before your six senses, which is present before six, one of senses. If there is something is present before the eye, and if the attention is there, you can be aware of it the ability to be conscious of it. 
is consciousness. What it does is, what that consciousness does, because of that consciousness, Nama Rupa, form, feeling, perception, intention, con contact, attention, they are present. So as long as consciousness is present, Nama Rupa are present. And also in Buddhist teaching, the Buddha said, the consciousness depends on Nama Rupa too. Nama Rupa and consciousness are help, you know, are supporting each other. They are supporting each other. You know, uh, if I, I don't have here two books and I have already, uh, it's a book, it's a big one, so I can't use this too big. Let me try though. Oops. Oh wow, good. <laughs> Do you see this? <laughs> right? So, why these two books are standing up and making this shape? Which one is making this shape? This triangle shape? Why? Which one? Both of them. Exactly. Both of them together. If you take one of them, what's going to happen? Oh. So this is the shape. It's gone, right? It's exactly the same with the consciousness and the Nama Rupa, Nama Rupa and consciousness. Consciousness, because of consciousness, there are Nama Rupa, there are feeling, perception, intention. And also according to Nama Rupa, there is a consciousness too. And according to consciousness, Nama Rupa process too. So now when we think about it, this is, this is a book. So that's how you become aware of this. Because you already have feeling about this book, about this as a book. When you see that thing, this, this one, then that, you know, the feeling and perception and intention that you have been experienced, just they right away give a message, you know, you know, uh, give a message of uh, this saying, oh, you become aware. Oh, this is a book. Because you perceive it. Consciousness functions there. And co you know, when consciousness arises there, you feel it. And according to what consciousness processes? According to normal Rupa. And in, in, in these teachings, another word that you can find for the uh, you know, another word that the, another thing which Buddha said which causes consciousness, which is the condition of consciousness, is called sanskara. It has translated as formation, sanskara, and you know we like to use uh, some you know few words for that: fabrications, concocted things, constructed things. And sanskara, the Buddha explained it in detail. You know, he explained that in detail too. The, there are three types of sanskara fabrications. One is the kaya sankara, bodily uh, formation, bodily uh, sanskara, which is the breathe in and breathe out. And the other one, second sanskara is vachi sanskara, you know, means verbal formation. We do have thoughts and a thinking, you know, thoughts and thinking, uh, you know, about the same thing, you know, vitakka, you know, the object and vichara, the aiming to the same object the sustaining thoughts but the here vitakka vichara is is the way that words come out words come out you know from vitakka vichara 
what is sankara it's like a formation of words words form form to fill out in our mind it's called what is sankara and the other one is chitta sankara uh, which is the uh, chitta sanskara the buddha explained that as perception and feeling in other way you know they are nama rupa because consciousness conditioned by nama rupa so nama rupa are uh, they are just they are conditional thing sanskara we could say conditional thing too the bodily body the breath in and out has been conditioned so because of breath because of this body there is a consciousness and because of the uh, process of uh, uh, forming words there is a consciousness it affects and even percep and even perception and feeling too because you know you become aware of this book as a book because there was the perception and feeling behind that consciousness that's why you became aware of this this one as a book if you wasn't uh, if if you didn't know if you haven't experienced that then you do not come to be aware of a book you become aware of something but you don't have perception feeling or a real in real idea about this you can't visualize it picture it in you there's no no such such an image or the built in it's not fabricated it's gone it's something is you know there are no uh, you know any idea or any information about what we see but when we hear about it when we think about it then there is a copy in our mind and when we see it again suddenly that copy comes up a shows up it pops up now what what keeps you know creating this sanskara so this fabrication you know why sanskara come to be and why sanskara this is fabrication of concrete things keep supporting consciousness and consciousness and nama rupa you know why you know why they are growing together why they are feeding each other why why it happens why the consciousness and nama rupa keep together you know helping each other what is the reason why they come to be why they grow ignorance don't know what is suffering don't know what is what causes suffering don't know what is the cessation of suffering don't know what is the path of freedom path of liberation that's called avijja ignorance avijja means not knowing of four noble truths don't know suffering as suffering if we are conscious of suffering as suffering then consciousness itself doesn't establish on suffering and grow then consciousness cannot grow anymore because there's no room there's no space of for consciousness to grow because consciousness when we become aware of suffering as suffering then there you know attachment fade away they fade away now we don't have such a strong awareness to be you know to make a conscious contact with the reality we we can't make a we we can't have a conscious contact with the reality because our mind is not well developed our attention get get always caught by hindrances so we can't pay attention to it and then our consciousness doesn't process 
in reality to become aware of the reality because attention is very important also it's one of fact of nam rupa and nam rupa conditions uh, condition the consciousness and uh, so when we you know when we pay attention to things in detail and very closely and attentively and very meticulously we can see all those details why you know with wisdom and then we come to put an end to the suffering because this we, we come to see suffering as suffering you come to understand what is consciousness when we become conscious of consciousness as suffering when we see consciousness as suffering then we do not our consciousness doesn't establish on consciousness and grow because consciousness is like a seed the buddha said that in bija sutta in sanyutta nikaya connected discourses the buddha said the consciousness is like a seed what is the ground for that ground is the form feeling perception and intention so then uh the seed is the consciousness ground is these four things then what is uh nourishing them you know what is the water is craving so craving drains them and then now the seed has a the seed has a ground and it has all conditions together and it grows so growing of this you know that growth is we call this you know suffering arising of suffering origination of suffering dependent origination we call it origination of suffering arising of suffering so what feeds that suffering what what feeds the seed and earth is craving so when we have craving you know that grows so craving is conditional so why craving is there because of ignorance we don't know what is suffering we don't see you know we do have breath you know breathe in and out in and out breathe in breathe out but what how we see it as the i breathe in i breathe out but breathe in and out is a fabricated thing it's concocted by things by conditions by conditional thing when there is such a process there is a consciousness too but we don't see that as suffering we don't see the cause of it we don't see how consciousness processes and the seed when seed if the seed is growing and then it gives you know a big you know lot of result right and it is growing keep growing keep growing you know so much you know things to grow so when we can see an end of it as you know we can see and end of it as long as it is feeding by craving and ignorance so now that is why there is a way the natural way to understand this process which is the noble eightfold path then we when we gain right view but when we understand four noble truth more when we talk about four noble truth we are able to banish that ignorance and we are able to see the path and more we practice more we train ourselves on the path we can see the way suffering originate the way suffering comes to be and also at the same time we can see how suffering ceases there is an origination of suffering and there is a cessation of suffering too So we were talking about the origination of suffering. So suffering, aging and death is suffering, they are suffering. 
sorrow, lamentation, and suffering. In briefly, five activities of clinging, of suffering. You know, the suffering that's, that they are conditioned by birth. The birth is conditioned by bhava, you know, forming an existence of a realm according to our action. And that is conditioned by attachment. Attachment, attachments are conditioned by craving. Craving is conditioned by feelings. Now feelings are conditioned by contact. Contacts are conditioned by six senses. Six senses, in the six sense basis, are conditioned by nama rupa. Nama rupa is conditioned are conditioned by consciousness. Consciousness conditioned by sanskara. Conditional things of fabrication, bodily sanskara, verbal sanskara, and mental sanskara. So when we learn that in detail, Bodhi Sankara is a breath in and out. And uh, verbal Sankara is the, the uh, thoughts and which are the, um, you know, the forming of words which are both and together. It's Vachi Sanskara. And Chitta Sanskara is the perception and feeling. So the cause of Sanskara is the ignorance. Why they keep fabricating? Why do they keep growing? Why can why consciousness and Namarupa can grow? Because of lack of true knowledge. We don't understand the way they grow. We don't understand the way they come to be. Because of ignorance, we suffer. Because of ignorance, craving is present. Even right this moment, you know, we breathe in and out. We have, the way we breathe in and out is that you know, we think, I breathe in, I breathe out. When words form in ourselves, in our mind, you know, the, uh, the perception that we have is me, mine, myself. Even the perception and feeling which we have. You know, the now, we, you can understand English because you have perception, feelings, experiences re regarding, related to these sounds. That's why you gain some, a meaning of it. If you have, if, if I, you know, I told you, if I begin to speak in a Sinhalese, you won't understand it. You will just hear a sound. Because you haven't, you don't have any perception, any feeling, any intention, no contact, no attention regarding that sound. But you know, when, when I began to learn English, what, we, what I did was, I, re I read I heard, I listened to English, you know, things and I had to learn the way they, they formed all the sentences and you know, all the patterns. That means I have to go through all the sounds and the meaning of it and then, you know, I got perception regarding all those words and meaning. That's what we call meaning, right? <laughs> and how you perceive the sounds. Bird. How Sri Lankans perceive that sound? They don't know what is, you know, that word. If they have heard about it, if they also are taught, that way then they see the same thing with birds. So then English speaking people also see the, the same shape, the birds, you know. They, they, when, then both of them are, see the same thing as bird. Right? Because they have, we have a, you know, same kind of perception regarding that sound and th that object, that animal, bird, even this book. There are hundreds of languages in this world that we don't understand. We can't understand. If we want to understand that we have to get familiar with those sounds and those, you know, we have to, you know, be conditioned. 
So when we learn something, what is happening is we are conditioning. We have been, you know, we are conditioned by that. That's why we have to hear things, we have to read, we have to see it, right? So then we get, the, we get an intention, a perception that the, those, you know, people are talking about and they do, they have. Then if both of us have this you know, perception regarding the sound, then we can communicate each other. It's a perception and feeling. Five aggregates of clinging in another way. A process of six senses. But they are conditional. Even thoughts, they are conditional. They are fabrications. Always they are, you know, fabricating things. You know, fabrication is a, a kind of nice word. But we don't know. The ignorance fabricates things. But we, but once we understand suffering as suffering, then no more fabrication, no more construction, no more growing. No more suffering. Suffering can't grow. No more existence of suffering. Because ignorance is not present. It's gone. We see how consciousness and Nama Rupa process it together, each other. And then we come to understand the uselessness of things. We see that things are empty of self and there is no use of it then we you know we come to understand that we you know we have misled by the ignorance then we don't get attached to anything anymore no more attachment once we are free from ignorance but we can't let go of ignorance as we, as long as we are stuck in sensuality, you know, the pleasures, we only think of that. You know, as a lay person, you enjoy sensual pleasure, but it doesn't mean that you should only think of that. You know, there is, there are so much pleasure beyond sensuality, we should think about that too then we will begin to associate that pleasure but at the beginning you will never, you will, you will not uh, let go of all the sensual pleasures at once, you can't. But when you begin to associate that a pleasure which is higher than sensual pleasure, the more you associate that pleasure, one day, a day comes that you are able to let go of that. You, you, nobody wants to, you know, Know, influence you, or motivate you, or persuade you to do it. You will do it. Because you in you come to experience that higher pleasure which is beyond sensuality, but in the beginning you will never give it up. But more you understand, more you come to gain wisdom, then you see the real pleasure of the world, real peace true peace, you know, then you will let go of it. That's how we, you know, we more we develop morality. We come to understand, we come to feel that, that, that noble pleasure of morality and then we let go of immorality. Then we establish ourselves on, morali on morality. And we will never get back into immorality. We are on the path. So, all the time, we want to be mindful of the reality of the present moment, so which is very deeper than the normal mindfulness, ordinary mindfulness. The mindfulness that we talk about in Buddhist teaching is very deeper than the ordinary mindfulness that other people are talking about. So other people say, whatever you do, do it mindfully. Okay, you know, you can steal things mindfully. 
<laughs> you can kill someone mindfully. Right? It's okay. You can do it. Be mindful and do it. That's not the right mindfulness. It is a mindfulness, but it's not the right one. That's why, I, you know, you know, it's a really good thing that we can learn from the, from the Buddha. Mindfulness, what it means. You know, in uh, one of, uh, you know, good, you know, one of book called, uh, it, it was a Dhamma discussion that happened in between, between a uh, king and one of Arahant monk, great Arahant monk, and they had a discussion on mindfulness and king asked, what is the nature of mindfulness? Then the Bhante Arahant monk, he explained it this way. The mindfulness, what it does, it, it shows you what is wholesome, what is unwholesome. What is right? It always brings the wholesome object to you, to the present. Then you come to see what is wholesome, what is unwholesome, what is dangerous, what is not dangerous, what is skillful, what is unskillful, what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad. What, what shows that to you is mindful. What is what, what is the reality? It brings, more you develop the right mindfulness, it brings the reality to you. That's why we want to develop four foundations of mindfulness, which banishes the ignorance. And we, when we become mindful of our body, we, become, we begin to understand body as body, not as me, not as myself, not as who I am. We begin to see the body as body, Feeling as feeling, mind as mind, not as me, not as someone else. We begin to understand all the mental objects as mental objects, all the sanskara as sanskara. Right? Then we don't see them, we don't consider them, we don't see them as me. But the way we see, the way we perceive things is me. Body as me, not body as body. That's the problem. We talked about that last in our last retreat. You know, the mind as mind. You pay attention to see the body as the body. What is the nature of the body? There is an arising phenomena of this body. There is a vanishing phenomena of the body. And there is gratification of this, and there are there is the danger of this too. What is the danger? What is the, what are the disadvantages of this body? This body is impermanent, and this is made of four element, and this subjects to change. This is not me, not mine, not myself, not who I am. Am I being clear? Mm-hmm. So when we pay attention to the body in the body that way, ignorance go away. But when we when we are stuck in sensual sensuality and when we are stuck in existence and when we are stuck stuck in ignorance itself, we are feeling ignorance. We are stuck in a in a frame. We don't think out of that frame out of that uh, box we only think what is present inside of the box but there are much freedom out of that box so Buddhist teaching is the great way to get ourselves out of that box and think wisely and expand our thinking capacity but most of the time, people try to, you know, narrow, you know, make they, are, they, 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 they make they make their thinking capacity very narrow. They don't think. They don't think. People don't think wisely. It's a, they have very narrow mind, very narrow minded people, and also people talk about open mind. 
open mind means that a mind which is free from anger which is free from desire which is free from delusion which is free from ignorance which is free from jealousy that is called open mind <laughs> so but open mind in the know in the general sense but how people think is that if you so if you begin to think what i say or if you like what i like oh you open your mind <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter you know with uh, what you know whether it is uh, powered by anger or greed or jealousy delusion doesn't matter you are open minded person <clears throat> you can be an open minded person that way open mind means mind is completely open from mind is free and also people talk about free will free will is a freedom freedom free will free, free, free from what free from anger jealousy greed delusion ignorance that is called free that is what freedom is but we have no freedom we think according to our ignorance we don't think wisely that is why we need to we need to learn the buddha's teaching because the buddha's teaching this teaching came out of a person who was free from anger greed jealousy ill will passion hatred all the defilement the, you know when we learn this teaching we can really understand that the buddha has eradicated anger greed jealousy because it is them always you know pointing at letting go of this defilement so i don't think that a person can talk about letting go of the you know these defilements in such way without letting without eradicating them so he has so much experience about letting go of this all of all the defilements and ignorance and that's why he always pointed at that target you know the letting go of defilements ignorance so once it so much makes sense it may so much makes sense that we need to see suffering as suffering otherwise we will not get rid of suffering because we don't see suffering as suffering we see suffering as happiness as long as we see suffering as happiness we can't we will never let go of suffering so when we see suffering we become very peaceful why because we don't get attached to suffering that's why we have this peace that's why it is important to see suffering as suffering peace come from there peace come from realization real understanding and once you understand it you are away from troubles as an example i always take this also you know uh, when we were babies you know when we were kids our parents didn't allow us to use a uh, knife or any tools because we didn't know how to use it even they didn't allow us to you know use any electric things right why because why 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 you know why is it you know it hurts you know we will get hurt yes we would get hurt if they let us to use them why we didn't know how to use it we didn't understand how dangerous it is right right but once we came to understand it then we could use it without getting hurt so then we let go of you you know wrong way of using it or wrong way of handling it when we understand it so they didn't allow us to get, use them until we become mature people mature person then we know how to use it then we know how to handle it but before we didn't know we just didn't know 
So when we don't know about the reality of that, about the danger of it, we it hurts us. We get damaged by it. Because we we are going to use it in a wrong way. So we have wrong intentions as long as we have wrong understanding. But once we gain right understanding about the reality, then we have right intentions. Intention. There are three types of intention. One, the first one is thoughts of letting go. Then we are saying, you know, when we have right, right understanding, we have thoughts of letting go. We are not going. We don't have thoughts of grabbing things. I need it. I want it. So renunciate, renunciation. Let go of things. Thoughts of letting go. And the other one, thoughts of non-violence and thoughts of love and kindness. When we have right understanding, we begin to have those thoughts, those kind of thoughts and intentions. So that comes from right view, right understanding. But when we see always me, 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 we have selfish ideas because that is the basement, it's a basement for the ego because we are covered by ignorance we don't know how consciousness processes we don't know that we don't we don't understand consciousness we don't understand the cause of consciousness we don't understand the cessation of consciousness we don't understand the path leading to the cessation of consciousness so that's why the ignorance keeps fabricating those sanskaras that's why ignorance is the condition of sanskara, fabrication or formation or all those, you know, breath, bodily sankara, breath in and out, and perception and feeling, and thoughts. Ignorance is there. More we come to understand, more we come, more we let go of ignorance then we are in control because no more attachment so we want to let go of ignorance so with the cessation of ignorance sanskara ceases with the cessation of sanskara vijnana ceases consciousness ceases with the cessation of consciousness namrupa ceases Nama Rupa sees. With the cessation of Nama Rupa, six senses sees. With the cessation of six sense bases, contact sees. With the cessation of contact, feeling, experience sees. With the cessation of experiences or feelings, craving ceases. With the cessation of craving, attachment sees. With the cessation of attachment, forming an existence of a realm according to actions, intentions, cease. When there is no more formation of existence, no more birth, because their six senses were not formed to be, so then there is no more birth. The six senses cease. Birth ceases. With the cessation of the birth, aging, death, illness cease. That is called the cessation of suffering. Origination of suffering is that with the with the help of ignorance, sanskara come to be, then consciousness is there, is present. When consciousness is present, Namarupa is present. Namarupa is present, six sense bases are present. When Namarupa are present, when six, when six senses are present, contacts are present. When contacts are present, feelings present, experiences are present. 
when experiences are present, tanha, craving, is present. When craving is present, attachments are present. When attachments are present, bhava is present, always. No, the consciousness is growing to be. So when there is such a growth of existence, <coughs> there is always an opportunity to be born. So when there is, when the birth is present, aging and death are present. That is how all mass of suffering <coughs> come to be, take place, originate. No one is making it. It doesn't happen automatically. Things happen according to the nature. Natural law. When this is present, this is present too. When this is absent, this is absent too. When this comes to be, this comes to be. When this ceases, this ceases too. So with the ignorance, with the arising of ignorance, as long as ignorance is present, this all the growing of consciousness, growing of Nama Rupa are present. Suffering is present. Craving is present. So the way we can let go of our craving, our desires, our attachment is that, you know, by letting go of ignorance. How we can get rid of ignorance? There is no way for path. We come to practice morality, based on morality, we develop concentration. Morality is very important in this spiritual practicing. Because morality is like a ground which all the noble qualities grow. So if there is no ground, trees can't grow. So see uh, the you know generosity, kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, equanimity, concentration, wisdom, and all those things are grounded on. And what is the ground? Morality. So morality should be very strong. That's why I ask you to practice that the eight precepts, and, I, and also we uh, observe that precepts too. That's why we are practicing morality. Advanced. That's why we should practice, you know, once in a while, we should practice that advanced moral behavior which helps us to develop our ability of letting go and wisdom. That's why I always would appreciate that observing opposed the eight sila, eight precepts, because it is a really great way, it's a great, very really advanced practicing of letting go. Because you know, if you pack, if you observe eight precepts, opposed to eight precepts, which you know, the, uh, you know, eight precepts that you can't eat anything after noon, and you can you watch you know TV shows, you can listen to music, you can't uh, you know, do any makeup, you can't decorate yourself, you have to have very simple clothes and very simple life no luxurious beds and chairs and very simple you will be happy with whatever you gain whatever you are offered whatever you are given you're not going to complain you're not going to blame thing blame anybody you're not going to say that foods are not delicious you're not going to complain that foods are very bad you're not going to complain anything more we practice those precepts, see how much freedom is there. Letting go. Let go. It's not just a word, it's a very difficult thing. It's not easy to let go, even though we talk about it. So morality is a ground of all the noble qualities. It's a ground, it's a mother. No morality is the mother of all the noble qualities. Morality give a rise to kindness, compassion, generosity, sympathetic joy, equanimity, wisdom, concentration, 
all these noble qualities. So I hope may all of you be able to develop those qualities, those paths, and then let go of ignorance and come to understand the reality as they really are. The real, the, the real nature of things and be free from suffering as soon as possible. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu.